Sister Donna, because she is having her procedure today. So her and brother Jimmy aren't here this evening. So let's keep Sister Donna and Brother Jimmy in prayer. And let's also keep one another in prayer. And let's just thank the Lord that we can be here tonight in his house and pray for other churches around our city or the world that may not be having a midweek service but really need to. And just praying for our youth. We always need to stay in prayer for our youth. Amen. Keep them in prayer. God is answering prayers. He's hearing prayers. And if you keep pushing, like Pastor tells us, pray until something happens. It's on God's time, not ours. Amen. So if you feel like your prayer is not getting answered, it's because God knows the right time. And keep on praying and pushing into the Lord. Amen. And the Lord will bring that prayer to pass when he knows that it perfectly fits in that time and moment. That he sees for it to be fit. Because the Lord truly has to tear us down from ourselves and build us up in him. Amen. So just keep on pushing in and always just pray. Pray and push in until something happens. Amen. Because the Lord takes care of us every day. He goes before us. And I can tell you just personal testimony in my own life, praying for my own children. And I pray for all children as well. But the Lord spoke and said, I have your children and your children's children in the palm of my hands. Amen. So what I'm saying to you tonight is, is prayer is necessary. Prayer is a necessity in our lives. So let's always keep Pastor and his wife and family in prayer. Always. And the church. But tonight, if you if you have uh, no cash or check and you want to bring your offering on Cash App or PayPal while you're in service, then Cash App is what you can download on your Apple phone or your Droid phone. And it's safe, easy, and quick to give. Through that app. And if you need help downloading that, get with us and we'll show you how that works. And then PayPal, you can of course give your offering with PayPal and ever how the Lord is talking to your heart tonight. But let's just keep in mind that the Lord is the one that supplies our needs. God is the one that brings what we need to sustain us in our daily lives. And we can never outgive him. And also, the websites are www.scog.org. You can click the donate button for those that are via internet or for the ones that are in the church that want to give through the website. And also, the mission site is www.m-25.org. Don't forget to put the dash between the M and the 25. So you go to the correct website. The mission site is us. Going out into the mission field in the highways and the byways and take the word of the Lord out into the streets. It supports our tent revivals. It supports the pastor as the Lord calls him out into different areas. So we need to also support the mission field. And tonight, I just say, let go and let God and let's all get in one mind and one accord and, and get it out of your mind. I'm speaking this in the name of Jesus, that this is a routine Wednesday night service. Because every time we walk through those doors, God is bringing us in. And we need to leave everything out there. So let's just enter in. Two or more. And he is in the midst. So tonight, leave it all outside. Because you're in the Father's house. So if you would stand to your feet, we'll say a word of prayer over our offering. Father, I thank you for all that you're doing and all you're about to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you, Father, that you go before us. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for all the things that you do for us that are unseen. I thank you for the protection, the healing and just everything that you do. Because you are the mighty creator. You are the Alpha Father. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to have your way in this place. 
Father, I ask you, Lord, to remove anything that's hindering the move here tonight. Lord, I pray and I speak in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, come down. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for no one to leave this place the way they came. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Long years ago in this building. And God, that you will give us your complete healing. 
37 and verse 11. How many believe that God can raise you up? I don't care what's happening in your life, God can still raise you up. Praise the Lord. The Bible teaches here, it says, uh, it says in verse 11, it says, um, then he, then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. And we are cut off from our hearts. Have you ever felt that way before? Our hope, he, he says, he said, they say our bones are dry, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and will cause you to come up out of your graves, and I will bring you into your land. I'm glad that I serve a God that always keeps his promises. Yeah. He keeps his promises and he knows what he's doing. Amen. And he knows Amen. how to do it. Amen. Sometimes it looks like that we think that God has forgot about us. Sometimes we think that uh, maybe it's never going to happen. But we've got to keep on praying and believing God. The Bible proclaims that Jesus will resurrect all of the Israelites one of these days. In the vision of, in the vision of Ezekiel uh, prophesied into the valley of dry bones, they all came together and, and came to life a mighty army. He came to life a mighty army that prophesied that 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 was prophesied was symbolically fulfilled already. Amen. When Jesus, um, when when Jesus comes, he's going to resurrect the whole world, the whole Christ, every Christian, every body that calls upon his name. But we find it that the Lord chose to do it a different way. We find that that uh, prophesied was symbolically fulfilled in 1948 when the, when the state of Israel again became a sovereign nation. After 25 years of exile, still, uh, still uh, more to come. Right. Still more to come. After 25 years in exile, we find that, that Israel, when they went back in 1948, we find that it was just an old desert, dried up, plucked up land that, that, that nobody wanted. Nobody wanted the Israel because it was just an old, dry desert land. Well, I want you to know that when Ezekiel was prophesying this, uh, he told them that you're going back to your homeland. Year after year, they looked for it, and they looked for it, and they were in bondage, they were in slavery, they were uh, they had to go through so much, and oh, God opens up the heavens in 1948, praise the Lord, and they become, hallelujah, and they come back to their homelands, and they become a sovereign nation. After 2,500 years, hallelujah, in bondage, after 2,500 years, church, hallelujah, wondering when God was going to fulfill the call, when God was going to bring them up out of the ground. Jesus will return, hallelujah, and he will resurrect all Jews, hallelujah. And, and you know, we need to understand this. The Bible says when he resurrects all Jews, he's going to bring them back to their homeland. Praise the Lord. I mean, every Jew that's ever lived is going to be resurrected one of these days. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm talking about? What I'm trying to tell you today, church, is we need to understand, oh, when the Bible talks to us about Ezekiel 38, he's telling us, hallelujah, even if you go through a holocaust, hallelujah, and the Hitlers of this world want to kill you and put you in bondage, even when you feel like all hope is gone and all, and you don't have no more hope, God says,
says, I can lift you up out of the out of the oh, out of the dirt. I can lift you up out of the ashes. Praise the Lord. I can give you beauty for your ashes. Praise the Lord. What I'm trying to say tonight, church, I believe that the Lord's trying to talk to somebody. I believe somebody's listening to me tonight. And I I believe that you have prayed and you have prayed and it seems like your prayers are never going to be answered. It seems like you've lost everything that you've ever had. It seems like, oh, you pray for your body and you get sicker. It seems like you pray for your finances and you get broker. Hallelujah. It seems like you pray for your spirit man and it feels like you're walking through a dry desert. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something tonight, church. We need to hear 1 Samuel chapter 2. The 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 6. The Bible says the Lord killeth and the Lord maketh alive. He, he bringeth it down to the grave and he bringeth up. Hallelujah. The Lord hallelujah, maketh poor and he maketh rich. He bringeth low and he, and he lifteth up high. Do you hear me church? And he lifteth up. Oh church God knows how to lift you up. Do you hear me? We need to learn to pray and seek God. In verse 8 he says, the Bible says he raises up the poor out of the dust. The Bible says he lifts up the beggar, the beggar from the dunghill. Do you hear me church? I don't care if you're in the dunghill and you are a beggar. God says I can lift you up from the dunghill and set them among the princes and make them the inherit the, the throne of glory. Praise the Lord. The pillars of the earth are of the Lord and he has set the world upon them. Praise the Lord. And I tell you, he began to go on. He says, we, he said, he will keep hallelujah, the feet of his saints and the wicked shall silent, shall be silent in darkness for by the strength shall no man prevail. What I'm trying to say tonight church. The Bible says one of these days you may be in a dung hill, but God knows how to raise you up. He knows how to raise up and he knows how to take down. Do you hear me tonight, church? God knows how to, uh, he knows how to put your enemy in darkness and let them sit in silence. Do you hear me, church? What I'm trying to tell you tonight, church, just because things ain't going right now doesn't mean it's not going to turn tomorrow. Hallelujah. The Bible says we May appear to the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Do you hear what I'm talking about, church? What I'm trying to tell you, church, that the Israelites, they went in 400 years of bondage in Egypt. They went into Egypt because they had a brother there named Joseph, and he was the he was the he was the man over the whole field, and God raised him up over all of Egypt, took him from the pit to the palace. When I'm trying to tell you, church, the devil may have put you in the pit, but God said, when he gets done with you, he's going to put you on the palace. Did you hear what I'm saying? He said, I'm going to make you ruler over all. He said, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over all. Did you hear me, church? And the Bible says, and Jesus says tonight, you may not ever be a king or a priest on this earth right now. You may just be a servant, and you may just have to chug a lug along. He said, but one of these days, when you receive that glorified body, praise the Lord, he says, I'm going to make you kings and priests, and you're going to rule over nations. He says, I know how to break you out of the dumb hill. God knows how to break you out of the dumb hill. Do you hear me, church? He said, I know how to kill. I know how to raise up. I know how to take down from the grave. Hallelujah. I know how to set the earth up. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says the pillows is the Lord and the earth is setting upon it. Praise the Lord. The Bible says He will keep uh, He will keep the feet of the of the saints. Hallelujah. That means God's going to keep your feet. I don't care how you feel tonight. It ain't time to give up. It's time to get up. Do you hear what I'm talking about? I just don't understand 
people. They say, well, I think I'm going to go to another church. It just ain't happening at the Smyrna Church of God. And they get over there and they find out it's the same old, same old everywhere you're at. You know why? Because wherever people's at, you've got a mess and you always got a mess. But when you get a God in the midst of a people, hallelujah, what I'm trying to tell you, church, God will pull us up out of the dumb hill. God will pull us up out of the dust of the ground and he'll give us beauty for our ashes. Give the Lord praise, would you? The Bible says, the adversaries, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken into pieces out of heaven. Listen to that. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican or Independent. If you're against the Lord and God's people, the Bible says one of these days he's coming out of heaven and he's going to break you into pieces out of heaven. Do you hear me, church? No United States Army can, can offend you. No army in the world can, can offend you. They cannot come and, and take up for you. Let me tell you something, church, because the army of the Lord is the army of heaven and earth. And the Bible says one day the Lord shall be. Hallelujah. He said, it shall be. Uh, oh, the Lord said, he's, he's going to take our adversaries. Uh, and, the, and the Lord shall break them to pieces out of heaven. And shall, listen to this, and shall he uh, thunder upon them. And shall he thunder upon them. And the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his kings. Hallelujah. Oh, church. And exalt the horn of his anointed. Do you hear what I'm talking about, church? Exalt the horn of his anointed. Do you know what the horn is? It's the horn of the altar. Do you hear what I'm talking about? What I'm trying to tell you, Americans, what I'm trying to tell you around the world, hallelujah, there's an anti-Christ coming. Do you hear me, church? There's an anti Christ spirit out there today. There's an anti-Christ spirit in Washington, D.C. There's an anti-Christ spirit around the world. This one world order thing is, a, is an anti-Christ spirit because they want us all to have one religion and they don't want us to have the freedom to worship God in our own way. They want to tell us what to do. And every time I see somebody with a mask on, I say, I know it's not the mark of the beast, but it looks like there's an anti-Christ spirit behind it because they have created this pandemic. Hallelujah. They say it comes from China, but we don't know that. It may, it may have popped up right here in America. As crooked as our government is, it may have started right here and they may be trying to kill us right now. I tell you, it's time for the church to get a hold of the heart of the arm and the horn of the altar and pray that we better pray Jesus. 
and Jesus will take us. Oh, and raise us up when nobody else can. Give us a give the Lord a big praise offering, would you? Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. He said the psalmist David said in 141 and verse 7. The Bible says, let me tell you, their hope is gone, man. I'm telling you that, that there have been times that the Israelites, and, and even you, you just felt like your hope was gone. Have you ever been in a situation and said, what am I doing here? How did I get here and why did I make the decision to be here? I know I have. There's been, a, there's been a bunch of times that, Lord, I made a mess out of this to help me get me out of this. I admit to you, I made the mess. Lord, I repent to help me. Hallelujah. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to call upon his name. The Bible says our bones are scattered. And, and our bones are scattered at the cave's mouth. As when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. Isn't this? But my eyes are unto thee, O Lord, God. But thine eyes is unto thee, O God, Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul to destitute. Don't let me die, Lord, to destitute. Lord, I know that her bones are scattered and we're even scattered at the mouth of the cave and of all across of the earth. But my eyes still remain upon thee. And, oh God, I praise thee. And, and Lord, I trust in thee. And Lord, I'm praying to you that you don't leave my soul in, in destitute. Keep me from the snare which they have laid before me in the game of the wicked of the iniquity. Let the wicked fall in their own nets. Hallelujah. That's what I pray. Let the wicked fall in their own nets. Do you know from the beginning of the America, uh, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but from the, from the, from the, uh, from the birth of America, we've been competing against a, a secret society. Do you hear what I'm saying? We've been competing. Hey, they allow religion because they wanted a religion to be a part of America. And they didn't realize that, 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 that God's people was going to excel more than they could ever imagine. Do you hear what I'm talking about? What I'm trying to tell you, church, oh, we can excel. We can we can still rise up out of this thing, but we got to get like David, God. we got to get to the place and say, Lord, save me from the snare of them that laid, laid those things before me, Lord. Save me from the workers of iniquity, oh, God, and let the wicked fall into their own nets. Oh, let the wicked fall in their own midst. We need, to, we need to get down on our knees and start praying. Because there's a real devil, and a real devil is in some people out there that's trying to bring America down. Trying to, do you know what? They've got a hold of everything else. Do you know what their next agenda, agenda is? Their next agenda, agenda is to come to the church. They're coming, they're coming to take your church away. They're coming to tell you what to do. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's their next agenda. That's what they want to do. Do you hear me, church? They're not telling you that. Hallelujah. It may be another year. It may be another ten years. But they're coming. And their next focus is taking the church away. They then found out how that they can control the whole world. All we got to do is make them sick. And they'll listen to us. And they'll do anything they want us to do. I said, what happened to the church that believed that the Bible says, I'm the God that he would be. Hallelujah. What happened to the God? Hallelujah. What happened to the people? and trusted in the God that says uh, I'm the God that healed me uh, hallelujah I will heal all of our diseases yeah. Yeah. somebody said to me on Facebook I told him I said 
I'll wear a mask in the store if I have to because I'll honor what they tell me to do. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to ride up and down the road in my car with a mask on and look like an idiot. Come on. I'm not going to walk outside when there ain't nobody around me with a mask on and look like an idiot. You hear what I'm saying? They can do whatever they want to do, say whatever they want to say. I'm not going to listen to them. I don't have to listen to them according to God's word. Hallelujah. I'm my own. Hallelujah. According to God, he's with me. He'll take care of me. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something, church. I know we've had people to die of this pandemic. I know we've had people to die. I've had good friends to die. I've had friends to die. I've had people around me to die. But I want to tell you something, church, that's not going to stop me from trying in a God that he would be. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh, church! Hallelujah. Somebody told me on Facebook, just to, I think it was yesterday, said, well, you will be afraid when you get COVID-19. I said, I won't be afraid. I said, I wasn't afraid when they told me I had cancer. Hallelujah. And I went through it. I wasn't afraid when I had cancer. And I'm not going to be afraid if I get COVID-19. And if I get COVID-19, even if I get the disease and die, I'm still not going to be afraid. Because I've got a God that says, He's giving me eternal life, church. What are we going to do? Hide ourselves in a hole and give up and get in the world and, and give up on God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And if they take any, if they take up any serpent, it shall not hurt them. The Bible says, church, these signs. He said, if you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Do you know what I suggest? I suggest the church to repent and quit playing church and get back to God where you can get a healing. Hallelujah. You know why people are dying? It's because for 50 years you played church and we need some real church. We need some real Holy Ghost. Do you hear what I'm talking about? shout all over this place and speak in tongues all you want and still go home with a headache. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If we get the power of God in here so strong, praise the Lord, if we'll start worshiping God and get the power of God in here so strong that every service we come, all we've got to do is worship and not get you prayed through every week, but get you to worship and praise God every week. I'm telling you, God will come in this place and we will see miracles and signs and wonders in this place. Do you hear what I'm talking about tonight? Washington is not in control. Jesus is. And what if God allowed this pandemic to come to strike the church to get them in line? You know, the church has quit praying years ago. church quit praying years ago. That's why people are dying and going to hell in a handbasket. Because the church quit praying. What if God allowed this affliction to come to put us in check? We're always preaching against us and always saying poof, be gone. And be gone. It'll be gone when God gets ready for it to be gone. You hear what I'm talking about? Did not the Bible say that judgment will start in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me tell you something, church. Just because we've got an affliction that hits the church and hit the world doesn't mean that we sit down and do nothing. Yeah. It's time for us to get up and pray and seek God. Hallelujah. And grab a hold of God. That means push some mills back. Push some mills back and, and fast a little bit and pray and seek God. Last time you got down to pray. How many times a day do you pray? Anna told me, she said, I asked him a question last time while I was sitting at the dinner table. I said, I 
said, when was the last time y'all prayed? And I said, well, I prayed this morning. I said, why ain't you prayed since then? I said, God said, pray always. Without prayer. Without ceasing. We got to pray without ceasing, church. And so well, when did you pray? I said, just before I asked you that. I'm always praying. I'm praying when I'm having a conversation with you. I'm praying when I get up in the morning. I'm praying when I'm going through the day. I'm praying when I'm eating. I'm praying when I'm sleeping. I'm praying. I'm believing. I'm living in the Spirit because I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something that this generation has never seen. I'm looking for a God that can heal a pandemic. I'm looking for a God that can heal his people down in their hearts to the place they will love them. They will love him instead of loving themselves. I'm looking for a move of God that will cause you to get rid of your identity. Yeah. Your agenda and your interests. God is, he don't care what you, God wants you to be interested in what he's interested in. Because we're coming to a place, church. We are in a place right now that we either sink or swim. Come on. This church is in a place that we either sink or swim. Who's going to hold in there for God? Or who's going to sink it and die in the middle of it all. There's churches out there right now, the, the churches across the United States of America. Do you know what makes us the greatest country in the world? It ain't because we've got all the money. It ain't because we've got all the fame. It ain't because we got all the, the bright lights and the Hollywood and all that. It's because you can go on the East Coast and if you can grow there, if you look across to the West Coast and look all the way across there and if you can see with them spiritual eyes and see every church of the living God worshiping God tonight somewhere from the East Coast to the West Coast. I know because Do you hear me, church? That's what's made America great is the little churches, the big churches and the people that keep holding on to, a, to, a, to, a, to a Jesus that said he's coming back again. I know how she I don't know about you church, but I'm getting myself rapture ready. I'm getting myself rapture ready. I know how she I don't know Somebody said, what are you doing? I'm praying and I'm seeking God and I'm saying God, the first pitching away. I said, Lord, you know the Bible says we're going to be judged on every hour of work. Every night before I go to sleep, every day when I get up, I say, Lord, forgive me for every hour of work. For every hour of work, God, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. I, I won't eat up in the blood. God, forgive me for all my sins that I've done. I won't eat up in the blood. Forgive me, God, for the wrong that I've done. Sometimes it cringes me to think about some of the things I did when I was younger. I said, Lord, forgive me. Help us, Lord. I want it under the blood. I want to go. I want to see you one day, Jesus. I want to. I want to not only know you, but I want to see you. I want to make you to heaven. I want that new body, Lord. This body hadn't treated me too good, but I hadn't treated it so good. But God, forgive me. Help me. Help me make it, God. And all I want to be going in the rapture. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That means the devil will never touch 
Ghost. Hallelujah. That anointing that was on them two guys, on, on the guy that's living, the, the two guys today, and they become the prophets. You hear what I'm saying? God can do anything He wants to do. Do you hear me? What I'm trying to tell you, church, uh, Jesus is coming uh, any way you look at it. Uh, no matter how you do it or no matter how you listen, Jesus is coming. I'm supposed to go to Louisiana if it all works out. I'm supposed to go to Louisiana and preach down there on Bourbon Street. And I'm going to tell you something, church. I told them the other day, I said, you know what? I don't want to go down there and preach. You going to hell. You going to hell. Get right. Bring out all the hell scriptures and, and preach them all into hell. But I want to preach how when I was going down for the last time, Jesus reached out his hand and he rescued me. I should be in a very hell. But Jesus came to me and gave me another chance. Do you hear what I'm talking about? There ain't nobody party no more than I did. Hallelujah. Somebody put something in my drink. I got so close to death. There was a man that came to me and he said, It's time to make a decision. Let me tell you something, church. Jesus saved me. I was going down for the last time. Oh, uh, you can preach on your testimony. You can tell people what God brought you out of. Oh, the Apostle Paul built churches on his testimony. Preach a hard message and make people mad at you. And they'll run from you. <laughs> or you can preach and tell them your testimony and tell people what he what Jesus done to you and tell them what he can do for them. Right. And they'll come to you and say, I want to find that Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I want to find that Jesus. Yeah. I don't know about you, church, but I want to keep that Jesus. Yeah. And I met a long time ago that changed my mind. Do you hear me, church? Yeah. Change your mind if you'll let him. God will touch you if you let him. But he's never going to come in and kick your door down Amen. and force you to serve him. Amen. Do you know predestination only lays? Come on, come on, musicians. What, what I got here. I don't know funeral songs either. <coughs> Hint, hint, I don't go funeral song. I ain't trying to bury everybody right here. You know how the, you know why the Bible can say he, he predestinated you from, from the foundation of the world? Because everything that we have is in Jesus. He predestinated Jesus from the foundation of the world. And he said, whosoever calls on the name of Jesus, he said, you are predestined. You get the same, you get the same predestination. But it's your choice. Who are you going to call on? Are you going to keep blaming Jesus for your mistake? Are you going to keep blaming Jesus for everything? Are you going to keep being mad at Jesus because you think Jesus took your daddy away or your mom away? Are you going to keep walking around mad and you're going to keep walking around confused? I suggest tonight for you to grab a hold of the, of, of the horns of the altar and pray until you pray through. Pray until God does something. Church, we've got to keep pushing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we gotta keep pushing. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna uh, make up a t-shirt and it's gonna say push on the front. And on the back it's gonna say, he said, hey, I'm gonna, it's gonna pray until something happens. You know how I've survived all these years? Even before I came here, before I ever met you. You know how I've survived in this old world? Truly believe in this Jesus that 
that I preached on tonight. I truly believe in this God that the Bible teaches us and tells us. He says, He says, He says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into your own land. Do you hear me, church? I will bring you into your land. God wants you to understand this tonight. He says that ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your grave, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you. That means there's going to be a spiritual trans. A furable thing is going to be some kind of spiritual thing is going to go inside of it. And he said, I will put my spirit in you. Church, whenever God brings you up out of the grave, when he, oh, some of you's already in the grave. Some of you's already down and out. But God said, if you'll hear my voice tonight, I'll bring you up out of the grave and I'll put my spirit in you and I'll give you a, a destiny and I'll give you a job to do. I'll and I'll show you that I can use you in this 21st century. Give the Lord praise, would you? Well, Lord, give the Lord a big praise offering. Go ahead and say something, Brother Kim. And I will tell you, if you're here tonight, you will come. You, know, you can stand up all over the place here tonight. If you want to come tonight, hallelujah. Thank you. 
Oh, God. 
and she and I and I and I wept and I wept and I went and I told my uncle. We shouted and cried and praised the Lord. This is when they lived in West Tennessee, and we shouted and praised the Lord. And, and sure enough, she went uh, two or three weeks later, and they, and they checked her again, and they said that her liver was just fine. It looked like like a brand new one in there. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you.